Hello and welcome to my March wrap up. I'm Bria and I'm going to talk to you about the books that I've read this month. So I read four books, two of them were mystery, one literary fiction and one, one historical fiction. So first I'll talk about the two mysteries and these were actually my most me recent reads. Also I'll put timestamps so you can skip through and see what I said about all the different books I read. So the first one is Mur Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This is a Hercule, Hercule Poirot, Poirot novel and this book follows a group of people who are in a train car and there ends up being a murder and Hercule, Hercule, Hercule uh, is trying to solve the murder and that's basically the book. It's a murder mystery who done it and I just found this book to be okay I think so overall I did stick with it I did read it to the end but I don't think I like the the detective like he has a full series and I'm like if it comes down to it I don't know if I want to go read his again but at the same time I do have interest in reading one other at least Agatha Christie novel so what did I like about the book? Uh, I like that it was on a train. That was really like the the selling point, and it's also why I continue to read it. I also liked um, the audiobook. So the audiobook I read, um, Dan Stevens maybe is the person who uh, read the book. There's a lot of things that were emphasized because I had a narrator um, performing it, but some of those things bothered me. But then in the end, it was like, oh. That was a part of the whole the whole thing so overall probably not like my favorite book probably not the book for me but I do have interest in reading another Agatha Christie novel it's really hard to talk about a book without or a book like this this is probably the first mystery that I feel like I've read and tried to talk about it's really hard to talk about it because there's things I want to say but it's hard to say them and I'm like, am I revealing too much? Am I going to spoil the book for somebody else who wants to read them? Because the book wasn't spoiled for me. So for now, that's all I'll say about Agatha Christie, um, Murder on the Orient Express. It was okay. I feel like I want something a little cozier when it comes to trains. You know, not a waste of time at all. Definitely check out the audiobook. I got the audiobook on Hoopla through my library. So definitely check that out if you want to read this book. Also, let me know if you've read Murder on the Orient Express and if you like or dislike Agatha Christie's work. Next, I have A Rage in Harlem by Chester Himes and this book was a, okay. Now this book, I love, end up loving this book. This is another, I don't know if this is a mystery, honestly, but it was a little bit of a mystery. You're trying to figure out, okay, what is going on? Oh, before I start talking about this book though, please know that the audiobook is read by Samuel L. Jackson um I got it on audible using my credit yeah that brought this book to life in just a, an amazing way so yeah so this book follows Jackson who is has his girlfriend and she introduces him to the scheme to where they're gonna be able to basically make fake money they're trying to have a scheme so they can make money and then I just had a thought about this too but yeah so then it all goes wrong and Jackson spends the book trying to find his girlfriend and he also brings in his brother who they're trying to uh also come up like the whole point was to get money so they're still trying to get money and kind of escape some of these dangerous people but also escape the cops and there's a lot of things that are happening in this book this book is very funny very chaotic and at the same time Chester Himes also has a lot of social commentary like I think thought it was really really good there was some things that I'm like I can't tell if they were emphasized by Samuel L. Jackson reading or it was emphasized in the way that Chester Himes described people or maybe people were the way people were described at this time but I was just like how many times are you gonna say the words fat and black like you know it was just you know and I think part of it is like the way Samuel L. Jackson like pronounces words and like enunciates is like okay but also I feel like it also I listened to it in a short time span so I'm like I'm hearing these repeatedly so that's something that came up but anyway I thought this was really good and so also 
in the terms of like the the mystery part or detective you know all these things and i don't know if it's a prequel but it's book 0.5 in the grave digger jones coffin ed detective series so it features them a little bit so you get a little sneak peek of like what they're like as characters before <laughs> before their series starts but I thought this was really good and then so the book was originally named in the U.S. as For the Love of I Imabel which is Jackson's love interest but I think the title that's the most fitting um is the French title but the French title translated into English is The Queen of Fools and I think that is the most accurate um to describe the book and I think it just fits the book in the best way so yeah I love this book though I love the Samuel Jackson uh what's it like narration performance it was really good um I think my favorite parts definitely are it's just like the chaos of everything mixed with the social commentary because it was so well blended that I'm laughing at the absurdity but of some of the things that Jackson does or that Goldie says but you you see that social commentary and you're like mm. I don't know I'm definitely gonna reread it because I just focused on the audiobook um after a while I realized you know what I'm not gonna be touching the physical book as much because at first I was going back and forth but definitely gonna go annotate and do all that with this copy with Samuel L in my head so definitely uh I I mean I recommend that but I also recommend the audiobook because that was such a good time there's also a movie my mom was saying there's a movie I looked that up and there is Robin Givens is in it for sure I feel like I saw Forrest Whitaker so yeah there's a lot of people in the 1991 um movie but I do feel like as far as like vibe match <laughs> I feel like Harlem Nights that movie with Eddie Murphy Richard Pryor I kept thinking of that when I was listening to it and it's not I mean, there are similarities, but it's actually not the same thing at all. But um, that is something I thought about frequently. So definitely let me know if you have uh, read A Rage in Harlem, if you have interest in it. I also really like the cover. Um, I actually didn't know Chester Himes existed or I didn't know about this book. I actually saw this book when I was in Waterstones in London. And I'm like, oh, so that's exciting. So that is Chester Himes. A Rage in Harlem. So next we have a book I picked up in Ireland, Claire Keegan's Small Things Like These. And yes, I love this book. So this, there's a lot to talk about with this book as well. So, okay, it's 1985 in this Irish town and Bill Furlong is working, we're leading up to Christmas and he sees something that um, he doesn't think is right going on in this, in his town. Um, and Yes. So this is a short book. So I'm also going to take precaution in not kind of telling you too much, but also trying to tell you what it's about. Once he sees what's happening, he tries to do something about it. And then that's when he gets pushback from different people involved, but also his family. And I really like um, the way the author, Claire Keegan, um, talks about specifically his wife and why she is like kind of against him saying much or doing much and then also I really like the way that she talks about like humanity and just like being stressed out or life or not even stressed out but just not in a position of like to do anything more than what you're doing do to do anything more than surviving and so this the book opens with a uh, exclamation from the Ir the proclamation of the Irish Republic in 1916 talking about you know the republic guaranteeing religious and equal rights you know for everybody and then also it talks about the book highlights this issue of the Magdalenian washrooms the Magdalene laundry system so the book is small but mighty and I keep comparing it to the Christmas Carol, Carol and I feel like only because it is something I want to reread through the Christmas time but also something that makes you think about or re maybe reflect on your position on certain things as a human it, you know you don't have to be like uh you know give up everything and work in a convent even though you know part of this is revealing how not good some of these people are but you know it's just like it makes you really think about huh how are you helping 
others essentially and that's kind of how the christmas carol made me think like it makes you want to be a better person or even consider how you're not how you can improve things like that i can't find the exact quote but it was also just a part where he was talking about how he was like you, your inside bill's head think and he's just thinking about like how he's just not being present and thinking about the next thing he has to do the next thing he has to do and how this is really never stops him i just think the way she writes about humanity and like being alive is so beautiful and I really actually so I listened to the audiobook for this book as well on Hoopla but I feel like I actually a rare instance where I preferred the just the the physical copy like in my hands in silence it was so well done and then especially I don't know I just feel like the big reflections I have from this book are okay I want to be I, I like the way this makes me just remember the point you know I feel like just I like just what this book makes me think about because it is a short book it also it doesn't tell you what to think you know it just shows you who these people are and it drops you into the neighborhood and then you leave and you have to like kind of self-reflect on your own I love that um I do think that could be an issue for other people that want to read this like they're like this book doesn't feel finished I've seen people say that but to me I think this book tells you who this family is and this neighborhood is, but it asks you more questions than it answers um, by revealing who these people are. And I will say though, my one issue is, I don't know if it's necessarily the book's fault, but this book is priced regularly. Like this was like the price of a paperback. I don't know. I feel like maybe that's something I should think about because I don't think it's like worth less than a book that's like 300 pages but maybe it's more of a philosophical question I'm thinking about because in my heart of hearts I can't say hey go buy this book that's the same price because what if you don't like it and it's short I say definitely check out the ebook or the audiobook if you have interest or the library of course um because that's the one question mark I have is I do think the book is worth its like existence worth its price like I feel like I got a lot out of it but just in case you don't definitely try these other avenues the last book I read was The Time in Between by Maria Duenas and this book probably took up the most of my reading this month but I'm still thinking about this book and this book also has me questioning if I want to do ratings <laughs> because all right so this book follows Sira she's from Madrid she moves to the pro protectorate the Spanish protectorate in Morocco just before the Spanish Civil War starts in 1936 and she ends up being abandoned by this guy she thought she was in love with and then that starts her journey so through this book this book is long and this book follows a major time period in history but also you follow the series like growing up she grows up and to me this is definitely a character based novel with history as well this really isn't an action novel though there is spy things this book is a character driven novel for sure so through this book you hit the different time periods so you have the spanish civil war and you see how that impacts the people in tetuan in morocco so whether it's the actual market people or the Spanish people living there, you see how this impacts impact, imp, you see how this impacts the way that they live, the things that they can do, the things that their relationship with each other. But also you see Sarah like grow up and try to survive because she has no choice now. Um and then then you start to meet um some government I guess official spies the people who are more involved with um the things happening in Spain even though it's from Morocco whether that's the Republicanos or the nat Nationalistas and well really it's the Nationalistas really in Morocco because I'm not gonna go through the history but I did learn the history through this book so then so yeah so that the next part of the book really is okay Sierra started to do what she has to do to survive but what could she do for her country because by this point the wars the Spanish Civil War is like closing out but so Germany helped the nationalists win the Spanish Civil War and in response they wanted the support in the World War II which started basically right at the end of the Spanish Civil War so there's a lot of 
in addition to that, as I mentioned, Moroccans, Spanish people in Morocco, there's also a lot of German. So then Syria starts getting mixed with, in with these people and then starts to feel like she wants to do more for her country. She meets an actual real life spy. There's a character here who's a real life spy. And then she starts to do, to do those kind of things. So it really is about Syria growing up. It is about patriotism slash nationalism which are different but it, it touches on all these things and then you do also get the history and then toward the end you start to see the impacts of the civil war on people who are actually in Spain who aren't in these positions of power and elite levels of society um like Sarah is as a spy as a government not necessarily her own government at that point but as a government official so I overall I don't know how I can't rate this book I feel like this book was it's something that made me really think and consider how I feel about things so this book I read with the Romance Language Center book club and I think one of the biggest things is the patriotism part is I have never felt patriotic okay I'm not patriotic for my own country but then in general the countries that were created and like we're just drawing these divided lines and these borders and it's kind of like who made this country at first I didn't realize I was like why is she doing this like why would she risk her life for this country like girl I don't know anything like I'm like I don't know anything about this and I feel like that's something I appreciate is not only seeing the history but seeing other other perspectives but I really do think um my favorite thing about the book is Sira like her resilience and like learning how to just fight for herself the brave woman that fought for life with little luck for me for them for us i must fight in order to be successful to me in addition to her actions it was proof that she like really was growing up and you see her continue to do things that definitely scared her but i respect it overall i don't know how to rate this book but i feel like this book is really for people who prefer character driven novels who prefer slower novels who like to be dropped into the setting um I do think I wanted more like action and things, you know, like just more. Fa I think I wanted a faster pace of a book because that's what I expected. But overall, I still don't know what I would read this book, but I do think I enjoyed it. I wrote an entire review in Spanish for it. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it. Like I couldn't move on from that book until I wrote that review. So, yeah. So I don't know if that's really helpful, but it's just an interesting interesting reading month I've had so that's really all for today let me know if you read any of these books thoughts on any books um recommended any books um to others and um uh, yeah that's all I have for you today thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video happy reading